But yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Because of COVID, I, can, I, I just know everybody's going to be trying to get it because that's the stuff that we're going to be would you want to be there all the time and say, uh, mm -hmm. It depends what's going on. Because it's kind of like a thing like, remember how New York fashion week was? Mm -hmm. You can easily miss something, get invited to something else. Mm -hmm. If you're not there all the days. But at the same time, Mm -hmm. What is meant for you is meant for you, but we got that. <laughs> Mr. King, United States. Yeah. So it's good to have some options, but it just depends on what's going to be available. You know? Mm -hmm. I ended up purchasing the Bakura hair perfume and actually ended up purchasing the perfume. Both smells are absolutely lovely. I actually love the hair perfume better because it was a very sweet fragrance. So I felt like it was better and it really lasted long on my hair. I'm more of a floral girl and that had more like sweet almond and was very youthful. And that's really not my complete vibe. Still a beautiful scent, none the doubt. I'm gonna have to do a haul because I've actually been buying a lot of bits lately. Some beauty bits that are new, some beauty bits that are old, but they are so good to share. Like, amazing smells. And that's a picture of the perfume that I just bought. <laughs> Uh, which is an art piece to say. This place is tiny. Uh, that's a completely immersive experience. It's completely changed what was there before. Uh, so you got basically this, this immersive layer on the top. Yeah. 
Well, you got your posing down. Thank All your you. pictures look great. I um, mean, we'll send you all these, and then you can pick one. Yeah. Um, and then we'll edit it. Cool. Cheers to a successful shoot. Make me giggle. That's all my husband does to make me giggle. Today I'm taking you on a art exhibit to see Queen Nefertari. This is an Egyptian queen and the Kimball Art Museum is doing a exhibit with her. So I'm excited to share this with you guys and you guys get to see the journey with me. So I'm still enjoying that we got out. Even if we don't get in here, right. we're gonna have dinner in Fort Worth. We, we're seeing stuff. I love it. Same. Mm -hmm. And we'll come tomorrow. Right. Can you just imagine these supernatural beings walking the earth with you? I mean, they were giant, 
clearly by the size that they were depicted, but having animal heads or or superhuman powers is just amazing because all this happened before Christ. So these are either demons or fallen angels or entities who have God-like powers posing as gods. And God had to create the great flood to wash mankind of all of these beings. We as artists depict what we see. So you know that these people saw these beings, just like in India, Queen Shiva and other different uh, supernatural beings. Look how detailed and preserved this artwork is. It's amazing. I'm just living for this basset cat. Meow. This is the, a map of the famous Red Sea that was parted by Moses in the Bible. Of course, being a black woman, it makes me proud to see the artwork and see skin tone colors that look like me not just depicted as slaves but as kings and queens and the royalty that i can feel in my blood Osiris, the god of the underworld, he is the guardian of the underworld. So deep, even up, turn it off. Beer jars, because even before Christ, he needed a drink. These are so gorgeous. Yeah, okay. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, really getting to the fact that when Moses came to get the Jews out of Egypt, that he really had a magic battle <laughs> like they were really going back and forth seeing if god's power would work against the pharaoh's magician's power this is why i believe in spirituality this is the god thoth thoth is the egyptian god of writing magic wisdom and the moon he is actually one of the most important gods of the Egyptian time. This is the text that the Egyptians would use to take on their passage to the underworld or the other side. They would use this passage to, to keep them safe. Just like Christianity, the Egyptians also had a commandment list that they had to follow by, except they had 42 commandments. 
And when they were passing on the other side, they had to have their heart weighed against the, against the feather. So every sin or every wrong they had did was weighed against the feather. And if their heart was light enough, then they could pass over to the other side to heaven. The writings that you see on most Egyptian tombs are actually incantations or spells and also basically other forms of religious writings that is inscribed in the coffins that help the deceased navigate through the afterlife. With this particular coffin, you can see the god Isis being depicted. So I am guessing that Isis is helping her through her afterlife transition. Spirituality is such an old, old concept. And we move so far away from it in this new century that um, I love going to exhibits like this to get back in touch with the real deepness of the world. To think of a time when Merlin, Nostradamus, and Circe were regarded in this world for their magical and healing and almost witchy type powers must have just been so awesome. Whoever this person was, was well respected and definitely well cared about. You can tell by the bright colors and adornment of her coffin. So you want to try those three? Yes. So you have edamame, those three, and what would you like to drink? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Come on. Oh. Uh, I actually, I actually, here, you got beer? I, I, I was like a Japanese I forgot which one it is. Uh, 
Which one do you like better? Honestly, I, it's really hard to make the call between these two. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. They're thing. both extremely good. Like, okay. I, could, I could eat both of these like all day long. Like, the flavor combinations really pop with them. Yes, thank you. I can tell you. I can tell you. I don't know. 